Good morning. And welcome to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. We're glad that you are here. Uh, welcome to you worshiping in person and worshiping online as well. If you are worshiping with us in person, we encourage you to, uh, uh, and you're visiting, you can uh, grab the pink, uh, pink, green, sticky note that's on the front of your orders of service and fill that out and place that in the uh, offering plate as it comes around later on in our service. It's one more way that we can be in touch with you. And if you are worshiping with us online, we encourage you to find the Connect slip uh, that's on our website, trinitymhd.org. Uh, and you can fill that out there, and uh, we'll be in touch with you that way as well. Again, a welcome to worship, a very special welcome uh, to kindergartners and to their families. A little bit later on in our service, uh, we will be celebrating the kindergarten milestone of Bible storybooks. Uh, and those are up here in our Be a Light booth. So if you are a kindergartner or a kindergarten family who hasn't yet grabbed your Bible, make sure you go ahead, um, visit the booth and grab that before uh, we do that presentation later on in our service. And welcome to you as well. In your orders of service, uh, there is a commitment card along with an envelope. Uh, this is uh, for, we're also celebrating Stewardship Sunday today. Uh, so if uh, you would take some time uh, to fill out that commitment card and place that in your order of service, uh, that would help us greatly in our planning for 2022. A little bit later on in our service, you're going to hear more about taking a step for Trinity and those commitment cards as well. We have a lot of exciting things coming up in our worship life together. This Wednesday, we have a service in our sanctuary for Thanksgiving Eve. That's happening at 6.30 in the sanctuary here at Trinity. That service will also be live streamed, so you can participate that way as well. But our children's choirs, our cathedral choir, will be joining together and uh, making some wonderful music. Uh, and, uh, and we'll be worshiping together on that Thanksgiving Eve. That's this Wednesday at 6.30. The following Wednesdays, during the season of Advent, we will also be gathering in the sanctuary at 6.30 for our Advent services. There will be services of a Holden Evening Prayer, and our theme is uh, There Will Be Light. So we'll uh, look forward to the light that is coming in the season of Advent. We'll have a meal that's served here in the Christian Life Center from 5.15 until 6.15 on those Wednesday nights. Uh, and then you can join us in the sanctuary for those Advent worship services at 6.30. And that's open to all people, so you won't want to miss out on that. Make sure you mark your calendars for those opportunities. Our children's Christmas worship experience is coming up December 19th uh, at 10.30. If you would like to participate, uh, or if you have a child that would like to participate in the Children's Christmas Worship Service this year, they're going to be rehearsing on Sunday mornings uh, in between our worship services. So at 9.30 in the Fellowship Hall, if you'd like to participate in the Children's Christmas Worship Service, you can meet down there, uh, and we'll look forward to that as well. Advent coming means that it's also time for the Concordia Christmas concert. Uh, we have a group from Trinity Lutheran Church who's headed to see that concert on December 5th. So if you would like to be a part of that group, you can call the office to sign up uh, or visit our website, trinitymhd.org, to sign up uh, for that event. That also means that poinsettia orders begin next week, so keep your eyes open online uh, and as you come here in person for that and help us decorate our worship spaces for the Christmas season. There are more announcements in your orders of service and online as well. I encourage you to check those out as we continue to journey uh, through our mission and ministry together as people of Trinity Lutheran Church today. We are celebrating Stewardship Sunday, as I mentioned, but also the Festival of Christ the King. And as we begin worship today, I invite you to stand as we join in singing together, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite forward our uh, Congregational Council President, Mark Jensen, uh, to share a word with us about taking a step for Trinity. Good morning, everyone. 
It seems like every time I stand here with an opportunity to talk to you, I always start by saying, boy, it's really an exciting time at Trinity. Um, hey, well, guess what? Uh, with all sincerity, I say again, it is really an exciting time at Trinity. So as you can see, construction of phase 1A of our building project is swinging into full gear. The Wednesday night shine experience in here is offering new educational opportunities for all generations. Light groups of all shapes and sizes are growing and shining brightly, bringing people together, making a difference both here at Trinity and in the community. Wednesday night Advent services are just around the corner with Trinity members sharing their experiences with light in the darkness. And then, of course, Advent means rehearsals for the children's Christmas service are starting up. The cathedral choir is busy getting ready for nine lessons and carols. In December, Trinity is hosting a blood drive at this time when our nation is experiencing its worst blood shortage in a decade. Lost and Found Ministry is remodeling its facility, working on a new strategic plan to more effectively meet the needs of those families in our, in our community and our area that are struggling with addiction. This is just a sampling. But as we know, this excitement does come with cost. Living out our mission to shine the light of Christ into downtown Moorhead and beyond requires resources, both human and financial. As a council, we are currently working on our mission plan, otherwise known as the budget, for 2022. You may remember that we decreased the mission plan by 10% this past year so that our expenses would be more in line with our recent giving levels. But this 10% reduction came at a significant cost. We eliminated a pastoral position, we eliminated a custodial position, and we gave no cost of living adjustments to our staff. So now, as we plan for 2022, as we experience growth in the physical structure of this church, it's time to think about how we grow in other ways as a church. How will we grow in our commitment to our mission? How will we grow in our understanding of the needs of this community and this world and how we can meet those needs? How will we grow our membership? How will we grow personally in our own lives as people of faith? And of course, how will we grow in our financial commitment to our mission? The theme of our stewardship campaign this year is Take a Step for Trinity. We're asking everyone to consider moving to the next step in your giving. What does this mean? Well, the chart in your stewardship mailing gave some guidance. Are you currently giving 2% of your income to Trinity? Maybe you could consider three. Are you currently giving five? What would it take to step to six? Well, maybe a 1% increase is more than you can handle, but maybe you can even step higher. Every step, regardless of the size, is so important. And at this time, I would like to invite forward those kindergartners and their parents. If you would come on up, you can uh, just kind of gather right here in the middle. If you have not yet, if you're a kindergartner who has not yet picked up your Spark Story Bible, Make sure you grab, um, grab it from over here, and if your name isn't there, then you can uh, grab it. There's some extra ones on the cart over there, um, so you can uh, just make sure that you grab that. Grab a, um, grab a Bible carrier, uh, and, uh, um, and there should be a Jesus on the go in there too, so grab those things and come on up, and you can kind of gather right here. That would be really awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Glad to have all of you here today. That's great. Come on up to the front. There you go. That's great. And you guys can, uh, if you, you can turn around and look at me. I'm gonna, just going to talk at you for a little bit. Uh, we are excited at Trinity Lutheran Church to have Milestone Ministries. So uh, every step along the way of your faith formation journey here at Trinity Lutheran Church, we help you grow in your faith. In first grade, you make prayer placemats. In second grade, you do faith tiles. In third grade, you'll get a different Bible. We talk about the Ten Commandments. In fourth grade, we do communion instruction. In fifth grade, we talk about prayer. In sixth grade, all these awesome things. And right now, your milestone journey is beginning with the gift of these Spark Story Bibles that I am really excited about. If you haven't yet had the opportunity to kind of page through it, there are some great pictures that are here in um, the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of stories about Jesus that are in there, and you can see those illustrated stories of Jesus 
uh, in the Bible, and this is a woman who has lost a coin, and she's looking for it. Um, so this Bible is yours, and that is really exciting. Part of the promise that's made in baptism by your parents, by um, baptismal sponsors, is to place in your hands, in your child's hands, the Holy Scriptures. So in just a moment, your parents are going to hand those Bibles to you and literally place in your hands uh, the story of God and God's people. And that is really, really exciting. And I'm excited for you uh, to be able to have these Bibles. Not only are you getting these Bibles, but you are also getting a cool Bible cover uh, that was made by Becca Schofield, Michael's mom right here. So everybody gets a cool Bible cover that you can go ahead and use with your Bible. And they've got handles on them so you can carry them around different places. And speaking of going different places, in your Bibles is also a Jesus on the go. So you can bring Jesus along with you when you bring your Bible different places. And here's what I like to do with Jesus on the go. When you are somewhere that's not Trinity, and maybe worshiping somewhere that's not Trinity, maybe Thanksgiving is coming this week, you might be going to grandma and grandpa's house or somebody else's house uh, to, to be there for a while. I like to bring Jesus on the go with me to remind me that Jesus is with me wherever I go. And now you can do that same thing. And you can take a picture of yourself with Jesus, and if you want to send that to us here at Trinity, uh, we will uh, post those pictures uh, for you as well on our website, on our Facebook page. So a picture of you with Jesus wherever you might happen to be during Thanksgiving or maybe during Christmas or a different holiday, you can take Jesus with you that way. And... Now that your Bible has a cool cover with cool handles on it, you can bring that with you wherever you go, too. And if you go to Grandma and Grandpa's house for Thanksgiving, I'll bet they would be really excited to read some of these Bible stories out of your Spark Story Bible with you. Okay? Awesome. So at this time, I'll ask parents to go ahead and place in your child's hands... These Spark Story Bibles, the Holy Scripture, God's Word. There you go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And let's pray, and then uh, we'll congratulate you on making this milestone happen. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your word, for the promise that you give to all of us in baptism. We ask that you would strengthen these kindergartners through your word, through the gift of these Bibles, that they may come to know your promise in a very real and present way. Bless them. Bless their families as they explore your word together and continue on the journey of affirming their faith in your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Okay, here's what I'd like you to do right now. I'd like you to grab your Bibles, hold them up, and then turn around and face the congregation and show off your Bibles to them. We don't talk about showing off uh, enough in church. Show off your Bibles, and let's congratulate them on these milestones. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming up here today. You guys can head back to your seats. And congregation, I'll invite you to stand as we greet our gospel together. this morning comes to us from the 18th chapter of St. John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, 
I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. And dear friends, in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the King. Amen. To begin, I want to reiterate the words of our council president here this morning about how important it is for each and every one of us to take a step in support of our mission and ministry at Trinity Lutheran Church. And yes, I know we are, as they say, preaching to the choir, because many of you who are listening this morning will fill out your estimate of giving cards. Many of you will take a step. I know Nancy and I feel like faithful choir members, we already commit over 11% of our income to the mission plan here at Trinity. And personally speaking, taking another step will be pushing it for us while we're still making payments on our capital campaign pledge for the next four years. In fact, if I'm honest with you here this morning, as faithful choir members of Trinity, the annual stewardship, at least this year, makes me want to do one of those eye roll thingies because I feel like we're already doing what we can. And I'm sure many of you feel the very same way. But as Pastor Matt reminded me this past week, even a choir takes time to rehearse. And in many respects, that's what our annual stewardship drive is all about. Our annual choir rehearsal, if you will, as a congregation. Reminding us how important it is that everyone does their part to the best of their ability. That everyone's gift is important, whether strong or weak of voice, flat or sharp, straight-toned or filled with vibrato. It's everyone coming together that makes for a solid blend and a consistency that will grow and develop after each and every rehearsal. So yes, I know I'm preaching to the choir, I know I'm preaching to myself but we need every single one of us to take a step this morning. We need every giving household to think about how we will take a step for Trinity Lutheran Church. And this metaphor of taking a step is not only limited to our, our financial support at Trinity. We need people to take a step in volunteering around here. We need each of us to take a step in contributing towards our life in community with one another. We need to be neighbors in our neighborhoods. We need people living out their faith in their daily life within this world, making a difference in the world, advocating for others in the world, seeking equality and justice in our world, being Jesus, my friends, in our world. Or as we are wont to say at Trinity, be a light. Shine a light on God's kingdom within our world, my friends. Take a step to help bring about God's kingdom here on earth as it is indeed in heaven. Because just imagine if Pilate had taken a step in his encounter with Jesus in our gospel this morning. Imagine how different things might have been if Pilate had not been so focused on maintaining the status quo for a kingdom of this world. Granted, that was his job. Pilate was a politician. He was part of the institution, and as such, he was sworn to protect the institution at all cost. Granted, the historians have record recorded for us that he was fairly good at it. In his early career, he did make a couple of mistakes, one of which when he tried to use the temple treasury 
to get funds to pay for improvements to the water system in Jerusalem, which did not go down well with the Jewish temple authorities who threatened to riot, and so Rome told Pilate to back down. And then there was this attempt to make the Jews swear allegiance to Rome by making them bow to little busts of the emperor that he put around the city, not recognizing the power of the Ten Commandments in the lives of these people who wouldn't back down. And this actually did cause a riot this time. But again, at Rome's insistence, Pilate drew back to keep the peace. For almost 11 years he did that. He kept peace in Judea until the Samaritan uprising in the year 36. The one decision he really got wrong, because that ended up in a massive riot and Pilate's eventual exile to Gaul in shame and in disgrace, where he took his own life in the year 38. But yeah, for 11 years he kept peace. He maintained the status quo. He did not step out of place. And to be sure, he probably thought his encounter with Jesus was going to be like any other day at the office, so to speak. Except, as their exchange developed, it must have become clear that this exchange was going to be different. First of all, here was the Roman governor confronted with a common Jew, captured, bound, and accused, accused of claiming kingship. And Pilate asks him, are you a king? A question that must have been literally dripping with sarcasm, for obviously to Pilate, Jesus was not a king. He had no army, no city, no funding, no robes, no weapons. He had nothing. He was nothing. However, Jesus responds to Pilate with an unexpected and somewhat sarcastic question of his own. Do you ask this on your own, says Jesus, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate must have wondered if this man was being insolent or just stupid. In fact, it's surprising he didn't sentence him to death right there and then. But like I said, this encounter was different because Pilate further indulges Jesus. How should I know? Am I one of your people? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. And getting serious, he asked Jesus point blank, what have you done? And yes, there's an expectation here that the the most powerful man in Judea, the representative of the emperor Tiberius, will get a direct answer from the defendant, Jesus. But Jesus doesn't answer him directly. Instead, He tells Pilate that he's a king from another world. My kingdom is not from this world. If were, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. And one really does wonder now who is doing the interrogating. Who's really in control of the conversation here? Apparently, Pilate still thinks he is, for he continues, so you are a king. And this is when Jesus seizes the opportunity. This is when Jesus proclaims his message, for this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And even though it doesn't appear in our lectionary this morning, Pilate ends this short exchange with his famously rhetorical question, what is truth? Not so much a question for Jesus as a question for himself and for us. What is truth? That's a hard question to answer, isn't it? A hard question I think we all probably wrestle with, to name the truth, to claim the truth, especially when there are so many, many competing voices out there making the same claims. I mean, when I think about the past weeks, the past months, even the past years, it feels like we're bombarded with voices claiming the truth. From our politicians, through our courts, in the media, on social media, even from church pulpits. Yet, ironically, my friends, there is an answer to Pilate's question. There is such a thing as godly truth, and it's standing right there before Pilate. 
The answer is right there before Pilate's very face. And yet he's so distracted by playing politics, by maintaining the status quo, by keeping the peace, he misses it completely. Like us, perhaps, Pilate misses the truth that Christ is always standing within us, beside us, and among us, just as he told us he would. You see, my friends, right here, Pilate could have taken a step. Pilate could have made a difference in our world, just as we can in this world. But he didn't. Instead, he took the path of least resistance. He took the easy step, the expected step. He maintained the status quo for a kingdom of this world, ignoring the godly truth that stood before him, the godly truth that was challenging him to take a step, a difficult step, a step for God's kingdom come. That's how it is for us, too. Because deep down, we know when we could have stepped up, right? We know when we've taken the path of least resistance, when we've taken the easy step, not forgiving when we've been hurt, but instead focusing on how we might hurt back, right? Not apologizing when we know we are wrong, believing it more important to save face, to save our reputation, right? Not loving our enemies, not helping our neighbors, ultimately, my friends, not trusting in God's promises to us. But here we remember it's not the end of the story. As it says in our second lesson, grace to you and peace from who is and who was and who is to come. From Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of this earth, to him who loves us and frees us from our sin by his blood and makes us to be a kingdom. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Amen. Or in other words, my friends, Jesus Christ will come as ruler of this world. And his reign will be one of love. And even we sinners who have not stepped up as we could, who've chosen the path of least resistance, who've maintained the status quo perhaps at the expense of others, we can and will be forgiven in this kingdom. For this is not just a kingdom Come, my friends, we're talking about. Not pie in the sky when we will die, but for right now, for this moment, for today. Because if we truly pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, we must be moved to action. We have to take a step. A step, my friends, for Christ our King. Amen. And thanks be to God. We're going to join together in singing our offering song, Prince of Peace.
I invite you to stand as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, for the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing nonviolent paths toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to rule in all times and in all places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person. We pray for all who are sick and suffering. Today especially, we pray for Kevin Johnson at the death of his mother, Margaret. We pray for Diane Holloman, Andrea Absey, Noah Fairfield, Leroy Hansen, Cheryl Aldenthaler, Harold Romsdahl, Vern Wick, Carol Camrud, Elaine Renslow, as well as those we name in our hearts at this time. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to hear our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time you are invited to commune yourself for those in your household using the words, this is the body of Christ given for you, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amazing goodness. 
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join together in singing our sending song. Now go in peace and be a light. Thanks be to God.